Alrighty, yo, what is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Mr. DDG94, back with another reaction video. Today, we're going to react to every time the next Steph Curry faced off against Steph Curry. <laughs> Without further ado, let's get right into it. I, I already know off the bat, Trey Young, um, I guess you could say Dame, I guess. Um, shit. I can't really think of that many people. Um, probably Jamal Murray. I don't know. I don't know. I don't really know who gets compared to Steph Curry outside of Trey Young. I really don't. Unless you want to say like Buddy Hield or somebody like that, but that's far fetched, like a motherfucker. And then motherfuckers started talking about um, Austin Reeves. Get the fuck out of here! I slapped the shit out of you for saying some dumb shit like that. Anyways, though, without further ado, let's get right into this. Today, Steph Curry is the best point guard in the game, possibly the best that ever graced the court. But back in 2009, not everyone agreed he had what it took to survive in the NBA. Not me. The worries about his physical limitations made I was one of the few that knew he was going to be great. I was one of the few that knew he was going to be great. It was, it was looking kind of bad with them ankle injuries in the beginning, but man, 2013 and beyond... I already knew he was gonna be that guy. Since he was listed at six foot three by Davidson, but was closer to the smaller side of six foot two and thin as a rail. On top of that, few people outside of the Carolinas had ever even heard of Davidson College, let alone could point it out on a map. But there was one thing that everyone agreed on when it came to Curry, and that's that he could shoot the ball. He shot 41% from three, taking nearly 10 attempts a game across his three college seasons. In 2008, people that were paying close attention to college ball were likely familiar with Curry, but most of the world wasn't. That all changed during the NCAA tournament. The 10th seed at Davidson started out hot taking out Gonzaga in the biggest game of his career up until this point. Curry would finish with 40 points and 8 threes. Then he exploded after a quiet first half to dominate the second in Davidson's round of 32 matchup with Georgetown. Against the third seed at Wisconsin, Curry and Davidson cruised to a 73-56 win setting up a day with Kansas in the Elite Eight. And although Davidson would lose to the Jayhawks, Curry and company kept things close, and Kansas would actually go on to win the whole entire thing. Well before Curry was an NBA MVP, he was best known for being the face of a March Madness Cinderella story. It was an impressive ending to his sophomore season, a season in which he set the NCAA record for made threes at 162. Then as a junior, after dropping a career-high 44 points against consensus number one pick in the draft, Blake Griffin, he looked destined for a lottery selection. Davidson would miss out on the tournament, but Curry finished the year as college basketball's leading scorer, averaging 29, 6, and over two steals a game. He was now a projected- And I said he should have went number one in the draft. I was the one person that would say he should have went number one in the draft. At least number two. At least number two. Like, I knew about Drew Holiday, Blake, and, um... Damn, who else? Uh, Hashim to beat. Um, but I knew Steph was going to be the guy. Going to the NBA, I knew Steph was going to be the guy. But man, did he exceed those expectations by... Nigga, it, nigga, he didn't just exceed expectations, nigga. He pushed the... He, he, he changed the game. That's how great he is, bro. So... I always knew he was supposed to be the, the number one or number two draft uh, pick in that draft, bro. I always knew that shit, bro. Watching him at Davidson, um, yeah, he definitely should have been. He definitely should have been top two. And I know a lot of the, I know a lot of the teams. I know the Clippers and the Memphis Grizzlies regret that decision now. So yeah, um, yeah. Let's get right back into it though. Did top ten pick, so he decided to forego his senior season and declare for the draft. But who exactly was this kid from Davidson? More specifically, what was this kid? Yes, he could shoot, but at the time, successful basketball teams were mostly built around speedy guards and bruising bigs. Was he the next Steve Nash, Mike Bibby? He was even drawing comparisons to his future Warriors head coach, Steve Kerr. And where exactly would he land? The Timberwolves, which needed serious help at guard, had the fifth pick. That seemed to be in play. Could it be the Knicks at eight, a team that got to see him up close and personal during the season? Maybe the Buck.
The Knicks was where everybody thought he was going to go. I would have lost my shit if the Warriors and all them teams passed on him and he landed on the Bucks. But it was it was without a question though he was going to the Knicks. The Knicks the Knicks already said Steph Curry was their guy. They had to settle for Jordan Hill. Damn. Bucks at ten. Looking back, he thought he was headed to the Big Apple. More than that, he wanted to be a Nick. And on draft night, it seemed like that would happen. After some wheeling and dealing, the Timberwolves ended up with both the fifth and sixth picks. With the fifth pick, sixth pick in the 2009 NBA draft, the Minnesota Timberwolves select, the Minnesota Timberwolves select Ricky Rubio, Johnny Flynn from Syracuse University. Not only would they pass on Curry with both of these selections, they took back-to-back -to -back point guards in Ricky Rubio and Johnny Flynn. And then Curry's phone finally rings. He's expecting to hear the voice of Knicks GM Donnie Walsh, but that's not who it was. With the seventh pick in the 2009 NBA Draft, the Golden State Warriors select Stephen Curry from Davidson College. Everybody in that building lost their shit. Time adjusting to the NBA. Oh man, the that shit was funny season. watching Knicks fans get career. mad. He scored 30 or more points eight times, the most of any rookie that year, and most since LeBron James and Carmelo Anthony six years earlier. He finished second in Rookie of the Year voting, just behind Tyreek Evans, averaging 18 points, 5 rebounds, and 6 assists, while shooting 44% from 3. In his second season, we would see a similar level of production. Curry had now proven that at the minimum, his college shooting translated to the pros, giving hope for another undersized sharpshooter, taking the NCAA by storm. Jimmer Fredette. Oh. I forgot about Jimmer Fredette. The only problem, did anyone want to be compared to Curry coming out of college? Sure, he was a good shooter, sure he was exciting, but being compared to Curry in 2011 meant something vastly different than it means today. No one was really looking at each draft for signs of the next Steph Curry, at least yet. By the end of Jimmer's senior season in 2010, he had emerged from being a relative unknown to a household name, leading the country in scoring, shooting so far beyond the three-point line, they created a new name for this area of the court. Range. NBA range. Now we have Jimmer range. As he was preparing for the draft, we would hear comparisons to various players, but one stuck out above the rest. Steph Curry. The Curry comparison made sense. They both leapt onto the scene from mid-majors after not receiving much high school buzz whatsoever. They navigated their schools to deep postseason runs. They had very similar physical profiles. But the most compelling similarity was the pair's exceptional ability to shoot the ball. Not just that, but at range and volume, college basketball had never seen outside of these two. Like Curry, Perdet finished as the NCAA scoring champion in his final season. But that's not all. They finished with nearly identical averages. Jimmer Fredette averaged 29 points, 28.9 to be specific. Curry, 28.6. They both shot 45% from the field. Jimmer shot 40% from three, Curry, 39. The knocks on Fredette were also nearly identical, his lack of defense and athletic ability. But just like Curry, that wasn't gonna stop him from hearing his name called on draft Ten night. Pick. The Milwaukee Bucks select Jimmer Fredette from Shortly after, he was rerouted in a trade to Sacramento, a short 90 minute drive away from Curry and the Warriors in Oakland. Over a decade before Light the Beam became the coolest trend in the league, the Kings had Jimmer Mania. How about we could have drafted Clay Thompson instead. We drafted this nigga, then traded him. And didn't get nothing good in return. What the fuck, bro? His jersey sold out, and the selection reinvigorated a Kings fan base that nearly lost its team to Anaheim just weeks earlier. Coincidentally, the first time that fans would get the chance to see for dead offered them a chance to directly compare him to Curry. On December 17th, 2011, the Sacramento Kings hit the hardwood for the first time since April. They're taking on Steph and the Warriors in the two teams' first preseason matchup. Fredette couldn't have asked for a better debut. He finished the first quarter shooting one for two, nailing this three. Curry started off equally warm, going three for five for seven points. But then Fredette marched back in the second quarter, posting his own three for five quarter. By halftime, they were battling it out, each already in double figures. 10 for Fredette, 12 for Curry. But Golden State led by a healthy 19 points. The two continued exchanging shots for the rest of the game. By the end of the third quarter, Fredette was the leading scorer of the game with 18 to Curry's 15. 
Unfortunately though for Ferdet, after a pair of key Ferdet free throws, he would go scoreless the rest of the way. Curry meanwhile, added seven more points to his total, fending off the Kings comeback and finishing with 22. But Ferdet's 21 was likely the most impressive outing of that night. Despite the loss, he provided early hope that he could replicate Curry. After all, he finished four for six from three, Curry just one for four. Now the rest of his career falls somewhere between a punchline and tragedy. Over the next three years, the two would face off a total of eight times. Jimmer averaged less than 10 minutes, five points, and less than an assist. Curry, on the other hand, averaged 19 and nine, shooting 44% from three. Just 15 days after Jimmer would drop his career high for the Kings in 2014, his contract was bought out by Sacramento. He then bounced around between a few different teams and D-League affiliates before heading overseas. The 2012 season was a difficult one for Curry. He finished playing just 26 games after an injury forced him out for the rest of the year. During the season, the Warriors seriously considered trading him to the Bucks before Milwaukee's doctors stepped in and nixed the deal because of it. Don't bring this up. Skip over this, please. Don't bring this up as a Bucks fan. Don't bring this shit up. The fact that we could have had Curry and Giannis on the same fucking team right now. You know how many championships we would have. We would be the most unstoppable team in all of basketball, especially if we would have took Clay Thompson instead of picking up Jimmer for debt just to trade him to the Sacramento Kings. Ah, oh, do you not know the Bucks dynasty we could have had? Please stop reminding me. When he played, but the Warriors were once again headed to the lottery and the concerns over his ankles were serious. Meanwhile, another gifted score from a small school was I making it. waves I knew it. Draft. I knew it. Damian Lillard was virtually unknown heading into his senior year at Weber State, but after dropping 25 points, 4 assists and 5 rebounds while shooting over 40% from 3, that was no longer the case. His scouting report was all over the place. There were a lot of different comps, Jay Williams, Jared Jack, Chauncey Billups, and yes, Steph Curry. His profile fit Curry's for the same reason it did for Det. He was an undersized shooter from a small college program. He was bringing a lot more athleticism to the table, but that didn't stop the comparison from With coming the up. the sixth pick in the 2012 NBA Draft, the Portland Trailblazers select Damian Lillard of Weber State University. When Curry and Lillard would meet for the first time on January 11, 2013. Coming for the likely rookie of the year, Damian Lillard is in the building. Portland, one of the hottest teams in the NBA, taking on the Warriors tonight. The Warriors would come out on top, but that wasn't the headline that came out of that game. It was Lillard's 37 points, shooting seven for 12 from three point range. In fact, he was the only Blazer starter to finish with a plus net rating. Curry, on the other hand. Dude, dude like Damon, his rookie season, bro, was different, bro. Damon, his rookie season was different, bro. You knew he was gonna be great, bro. Just off that, that rookie season, everybody was dig riding Anthony Davis. Still is for some odd reason, but that nigga Dame, bro, he he was letting y'all know, bro, I'm, bro, the league is mine. Finished with 22 points and 12 rebounds, the only Warriors starter that finished with a negative net rating. The game left some believing that Lillard would one day surpass Curry as a basketball player, but that also goes to show you Curry's status in 2012. He was just two years away from his first championship, but his injury history and lack of playoff experience made the future nearly impossible to imagine. Now Lillard's actually been one of the few to hold his own in the point guard duels with Curry throughout his career. In actuality, he's probably the closest thing we've seen to Curry. Both playing in the West, they've matched up a total of 24 times. Lillard's average 27 and six, shooting 42% from three. Impressive, but not quite Curry's 32 and seven, shooting 45% from three. Now, when we go back to 2012, front offices weren't looking to unearth the next step Curry in the draft, but that was quickly changing. The 2013 season marked a turning point in his career. Slowly, he was putting to bed concerns that his ankles couldn't hold up over the course of an 82 game season. He missed just four games all year. Even better, they made it to the playoffs, defeating an upstart Denver Nuggets team in round one. They would then face the Spurs and fall in six games. Things really started clicking for him the next season. He averaged 24 and nine, both career highs. He earned his first All-Star nod. The Warriors won 51 games, the most since Curry's arrival in 2009. In the first round, they would face a 57-win Los Angeles Clippers, who would ultimately defeat them in seven games. With that early exit, questions began swirling. Could the Warriors really win 
with a curry clay backcourt? Was Mark Jackson the answer at coach? And evidently, the front office had those same fears. The team nearly pulled off a swap involving Klay Thompson and Timberwolves star Kevin Love. That summer, they would fire Jackson, replacing him with first-time head coach Steve Kerr. During the 2015 season, they won 67 games behind Curry's 24 and 8. They made light work of their conference playoff opponents. They dropped just three total games. In addition, Curry was crowned regular season MVP and earned a final showdown with LeBron James and the Cavaliers. Six games later, the championship is back in the bay for the first time in 40 years. His star status would not stop rising. The Warriors won an NBA record 73 games in 2016, and Curry led the league in scoring with 30 points, earning his second straight MVP and the first unanimous one the league had ever seen. In the finals, they would meet the Cavaliers for a rematch. This time, though, the Cavaliers are NBA even though Curry fell short of a second ring, scouts were actively looking for the next Curry. Gives it to Buddy. Half court. I knew it. I knew it. I fucking knew it. I told y'all it was Buddy Hill. I told you, Buddy Hill. The timing could not have been better. Now, comparing Heald to one of the 10 best players of all time seems ridiculous today. But in 2016, he would have as much upside to be the next Curry as anyone. He lit up his senior year with Oklahoma. He made 147 threes, only 15 behind Curry's record mark in 2008. In April, he took home the Wooden Award, averaging 25 and 6, leading the country in three point shooting. Now, the comparison to Curry was by no means consensus. Some thought comparing the two was ludicrous, and it definitely wasn't perfect. But the search for the next step was in full swing. And this was as close as talking heads were going to get to that. With the sixth pick in the 2016 NBA Draft, the New Orleans Pelicans select Buddy Heald from Freeport, Bahamas, and the University of... Not too long after, the two would finally get a chance to meet on the hardwood. October 27, 2016, Heald's Pelicans host the Warriors in the second game of the season. To call it a disappointing debut might be an understatement. Heald had as many turnovers as points two of each. He went 0 for 6 from the field and 0 for 2 from deep. Curry, meanwhile, was still just settling into the season. He put up 23 points on 19 shots, including four threes, to give the Warriors a 122-114 to win. They would match up again just a week later, and Buddy played a lot better. He had four of his 10 shots for nine points and hauled in six rebounds. But Curry also rose to the challenge. He exploded for 46 points. God damn. Not just that, he did this. Tonight. Oh, did he break the record? They did everything right. If he hits this, feels it like a shortstop. I think no matter what, he said he is. And now he's going to take it out on people. Here's that ninth three. Bro, Kobe's record, man. Since then, no, the Kobe two have faced each 15 here. times. Heald's average a solid 16, shooting 39% from three. Curry, 30 points, shooting 46% from three. But luckily for Buddy, the Curry comparisons died long ago. Few were bold enough to mention the two in the same breath after those first few encounters, something that proved to be a good idea. Now, to be fair, no one was touching Curry's status by the mid-2010s. By 2017, people were running out of ways to praise the Warriors. Kevin Durant joined the team, the Warriors won 67 games, and Curry was as good as ever, averaging 25, shooting 41% from beyond the arc. That postseason, the Warriors would only need 17 games to win an NBA title, one game shy of a perfect postseason. But disaster nearly struck the following season. Down the stretch, Curry suffered a knee sprain, one that actually kept him out for the first round of the playoffs. But luckily, that didn't matter. He returned in the second round, and the Warriors went 11-4 from that point on, defeating the Cavs for back-to-back -back rings. Steph was now untouchable, a legend, not only one of the best players in the league, but the best shooter the game had ever seen, and no one ever came close. After whiffing on Fredette and healed comps, surely no one out of college would be compared to Curry again, right? 
Coming out of the University of Oklahoma in 2018, one comparison followed freshman Trey Young everywhere he went. Let's it go! The comps on the surface made sense. The long range shooting was there, the vision was there, even their bodies were extremely similar. And while looking at Trey Young's freshman season in totality, you might be scratching your head on why he would receive a comparison like Curry. But we need to remember just how impressive the start of Trey Young's college career was. In the first half of his freshman season, in the 16 of his 32 games, this is not an NBA stat line, this really happened. Trey Young averaged 30 points and 11 assists shooting 41% from three Damn. on over 10 attempts a game. Woo! But once we finally had someone that nearly everyone was calling the next Curry, and well, it didn't feel all that crazy to say. This was the best start to a college career we might have ever seen. Yeah. Now, Trey's numbers would take a massive hit in the second half of the year, but that run had already established the Curry comps, which were gonna be way too hard to the shake. The pick in the 2018 NBA draft, the Dallas Mavericks select Trey Young from the University of Oklahoma. The selection was made by Dallas, but it was for Atlanta who had traded down from three to five. To start Trey's rookie season, things were not going good, but everyone was still excited to finally see the comparison up close and personal. And on December 3rd, 2018, that's what would happen, a Monday night showdown between the Hawks and Warriors. While Trey made the first shot of the two, Trey goes baseline. One. Curry responded, the three ball go and hits. then his second, third, fourth, the fifth, and sixth and shots to six open the six. game. Curry finished the quarter with 18 points, shooting six for seven from the field, which was not only more than Young, but more than the entire Hawks team. Between that start and what he had done against Heald, it was really starting to look like Curry was trying to put any of these comparisons to rest as soon as possible. Trey Young couldn't have imagined a worse start. He committed turnovers on two of Atlanta's first three possessions. He missed his first two shot attempts. By the end of the first quarter, the Warriors led 34-17, and for a moment, the second quarter looked like it might be more of a nightmare for Young. Great save by Pembry. Trey Young missing that three. Then we started to see that Trey Young, that Atlanta was promised when he gave up the draft rights to Luka Doncic. A transition layup over Jarepko, a cross-court pass leading to an easy dunk for Kevin Herter. A trademark lob to John Collins for a slam. A nice floater over Kevin Durant. Slowly, the Hawks clawed back into the game. Out of the half, Young started right where he left off, making this quick transition layup. Unfortunately though, that would just be one of three shots he would make for the rest of the game. Curry would spend that time doing what he does best, even to the stoutest defenders, let alone an undersized rookie whose defense wavers between nonchalant and non-existent. Step. And though the pre-draft Curry comps touted the pair's shooting prowess, only one lived up to the hype. Curry nailed six of his 10 threes. Young failed to connect on any of his five attempts from distance. Oh, and Trey, who was touted way more for his playmaking than Curry ever was, finished the game with just three assists against seven turnovers. Following the contest, the two-time MVP would pump the brakes on the comparisons, explaining to reporters, My name is Stephen Curry and his name is Trey Young. Two different players, so. Since that game, the Curry-Young comps have quieted down considerably. Curry's not just an incomparable shooter to Young. They are much different players entirely. The two have now matched up a total of four times, and it really hasn't gone well for Trey. He's averaged 22 and seven to nearly six turnovers, shooting just 30% from three. Curry, on the other hand, has put up 37 a game, shooting 41% from three. It's safe uh, to say that Curry no one's been able personal. to live up to the Curry comparison. Will we ever see it again? Nope, not at all. But yeah, man, that's just going to about do it for this one, man. Uh, Curry took it personal. <laughs> I guess when it comes to Trey Young, he takes it personal. But anyways, that's just going to about do it for this one, man. I will see you all in the next video. Till then, peace out.